what is your advice to a youngster um so i think um how i would look at it is there's never going to be a day in our life uh, be it financial crisis tsunami war even if we go abroad um racism to you know so much discrimination that happens in this world there's not going to be a day in our lives where we are going to be absolutely happy with the external conditions that drive our life i think the choice to be happy to be motivated lies with us i i sincerely believe that happiness is a choice and um, while it's going to be extra hard this year um you know sri lanka is a lovely land of opportunity and for those who are not lazy for those who look for opportunity there's abundant opportunity uh, whilst in the short term it's going to be extremely tough and there's no two words about it i feel if we look for opportunity opportunity is always there but you need to be you need to be you know determined to make it you need to be you know every day is going to be grit that you drive so i think for a youngster who's not tired of life who's looking to live an amazing life you need to understand that it's never going to be rosy but if you strive for it it's there you just have to make it let me warmly welcome all of you to another session in the mba diaries for the year 2023 and on behalf of happy sri lanka we warmly welcome you all the viewers who are on board with us our dear students and of course as asia pacific institute of information technology we are honored to be hosting this session today as well with another veteran in the global corporate world especially in a time where many discussions are held about global national challenges and how to overcome them as well so with that let me again welcome our students from staffordshire university who are here in the platform and all the members who are joining us from partner universities and all the foreign delegates and diplomats who have been with us all this while and who are joining us today as well and in addition to that all the distinguished guests who are in the platform as well so to start with let me welcome dr rohan tatukorala who is a pioneering personality behind bringing this platform and this opportunity to all the students one of the directors at apit sri lanka and of course the pioneering personality for graduate and post graduate and undergraduate student programs as well with that dr rohan tat over to you thank you very much kaushali and um it's actually uh, happy new year to everybody it's a new challenge uh we are, i think having the 102nd uh, mba diary and um, this time we have a doer uh, and not a person who is um, more on the conceptualizing area as a ceo and a uh, and a chairman of a com company uh, which has been the tone that we have had for the last um, maybe 2 years so today we have a person who is uh, an award winning marketer who believes in bringing together uh magic of creativity and the power of logic to the driving brands towards growth uh, a former brand custodian of astra magazine the unilever of unilever sri lanka uh, and during her five year tenure she led the global cross functional team across countries to reinstate astra the fat spread portfolio and the cold chain logistical network uh, when sri lankan factory was burned down currently she is the chief marketing officer of the second largest insurer soft logic life and she was instrumental uh, together with her team in terms of uh, seeing how the company can move uh, from the fifth fifth position to the second position within a uh, five year duration she revolutionized the life insurance business making soft logic the, um, the youngest brand ever to win uh the brand of the year twice at the FE awards in 2019 and 2020 and thereafter she went on to lead the organization to win multiple gold fe's global and apac mobile smart awards walk awards best campaign of sri lanka gold at the dragons of asia awards 
And in 2022, she was a judge, the marketing professional of the year at the top 50 women awards by uh, World Bank, IFC Arm, together WIM, Sri Lanka. And she was also the top dog at the prestigious Miami Ad School Strategy Boot Camp. Um, an amazing personality has done Sri Lanka proud being appointed as the jury member in the APAC MMA jury, uh, Phoenix Awards jury, Dragons of Asia, and also the exco member of Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing. Um, she's a stalwart of SLIM, um, a chairperson of the FE Awards 2021, SLIM Brand Excellence Award 2022. And of course, she also serves the government of Sri Lanka uh, as an advisor on the marketing strategy for the Sri Lanka Export Development Board, as well as the Electricity Board. Um, this time, she's also the project chair for nation branding at the Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing. An exceptionally academic um, a person. Um, she is a graduate of the University of Colombo, uh, one of the top universities in Sri Lanka specializing in nanochemistry. In fact, she has a double degree in it uh, by the Institute of Chemistry also. And of course, she has an MBA from Cardiff Metropolitan. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Chief Marketing Officer of Softlogic Life Insurance, uh, Kavi Rajapaksa. Over to you, Kavi. Thank you so much. Happy New Year and good evening. Uh, it's, a, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm just going to quickly share my screen because I don't want to just talk to you. I want to make sure you have something to look at while I talk to you. So, all right. Um, second, I'm just going to. Okay. Um, is my screen visible and am I audible? Can you perfect. see my? Yeah, perfect. Yes? Go ahead. All right. So um, let me see now. Driving brands during tough times. Uh, so when I talk about brands, I want to give an appreciation for what uh, has been done. Um, I'm going to just quickly run through some slides of what last year has been. So you have a better understanding of where I'm coming from before I say what to do. Let me tell you what we did so that um, you come into it knowing that it is possible, right? So, uh, you know, life insurance in Sri Lanka has very, very low penetration. We are in a typical island uh, with the, you know, uh, uh, how do I say it? That um, like, you know, be it as it uh, every day, kind of figure out uh, whatever comes that may uh, kind of mentality. So it's very difficult to sell life insurance. People are completely fine to adapt to uncertainty. So as a result, uh, even after 100 years of life insurance in Sri Lanka, the penetration is still at 16%. Um, but uh, in the market, uh, the top five players, uh, when I started in Sophologic Life five years ago, they were selling for life, Sri Lanka insurance, AIA, Union Assurance and then uh, Softlogic Life, a brand new brand that was only about two weeks old. Um, so into a 2018, um, we set out to clearly say that we don't want to drive people mad by like, you know, inculcating fear. We don't want to show how little kids suffer without the embrace of a father through our communication and further drive people away from life insurance. We wanted to set out and inspire people to live life and love life and tell them that if something happens, we are going to be there for you. And I don't know if you are familiar, we uh, we first launched with this campaign called Little Edda. And um, from 2018, when we were number five, to now, up to now, it has been absolute chaos. Uh, we had a good 2018. Uh, in 2019, uh, with the Easter Sunday attack itself, we were able to become number four, surpassing Union Assurance. That was a 25-year dominance that we kind of overtook. Then in 2020, 2021, we were able to take over the multinational giant AIA. And last year, we were able to take on the state insurer, Sri Lanka Insurance, surpass them to become number two with 20% growth. And we have only just one more rung to go in the market ladder. To quickly run through, uh, I think this is why Dr. Rohanta also wanted me to share my experience with you. Sophrogic Life has had a brilliant year last year. 
um, from a transparency point of view, be it annual report awards, be it digital marketing awards, be it brand excellence, be it becoming the brand of the year yet again at FEs uh, at a South Asian level, be it becoming one of the best insurance companies, best use of IT from innovative point of view, be it from a website and customer journey point of view, uh, then again, um, uh, at the Emerging, Emerging Asia Insurance Awards, remember I mentioned that Sri Lanka's life insurance is extremely low penetrated and still we were able to come on top in a region that includes India, Thailand, big companies who has big countries that has really good life insurance markets, we were able to surpass. And um, also at management practices, um, I'm, I've just only put the highlights here, um, best place to work for, Hall of Fame, all of that, right? And um, then we took Marketing International at Dragons of Asia, best campaign, gold, all that. And uh, we were amongst all of these amazing large entities, groups of companies. We were one of, uh, we were recognized as one of the most top awarded companies in Sri Lanka. Um, again, <laughs> DGs, uh, brand excellence, annual report. So all of this um, is a result of really uh, hard work, staying calm and basically, um, you know, boxing on in a, in a tough year. I don't know if you're familiar with this. Uh, after I led the campaign, uh, one of the biggest challenges we had with the pandemic was that leader was really negatively associated with the pandemic. I mean, you can't say leader during a pandemic. So we Again, um, we couldn't really um, continue on the success we had as a brand. Um, so we had to really come up with a trick of our own to better that. And um, uh, I mean, we're a positive brand, like I said. Suffragic Life uh, revolutionized the life insurance industry with its positive spin. And we didn't want to revert to the fear mongering tactics. So we sought the help of uh, five people who represent the hope that Sri Lanka had at that moment. Uh, we know if Sri Lanka is a body, cricket is at its heart. And this was a young team of cricketers who were coming around, turning around things. They brought hope. They brought positivity. And uh, being the life insurer who um, kind of um, thinks about uh, live life, love life the way we do, we wanted them to inspire Sri Lanka about a positive outcome. Um, yes, things are tough now, but we wanted to show that any moment, if we choose right, can be turned into a positive moment. And uh, this is just to inspire you. Uh, we didn't just like, you know, accept defeat last year in terms of campaigns. We launched this. Uh, when the Aragalia came, we want to do an Aragalia of our own. You know, it's at the cradle when the mother sings to the child that most of these thoughts and dreams are kind of formulated. So we wanted these Darun Alavidya, you know, uh, all the lullabies that we have are very old. It, 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 it kind of goes back to when we were kids and when our parents were kids. So we wanted to give more time relevant um, uh, uh lullabies that could inspire the next generation to really become better leaders and lead Sri Lanka towards greatness, right? And when Sri Lanka was suffering without food, uh, we want to inspire Sri Lankans yet again uh, in terms of home gardening. And I think you have seen our most recent, um, uh, I don't want to say tactic, I would, I want to say campaign. Uh, this is uh, the world's first, uh, verified, world's first ever uh, Christmas tree made out of uh, vegetable trees. Um, so vegetable plants, I mean, you know how uh, Christmas trees are basically made out of trees being cut down. Instead, we completely spun it around and at one of the most toughest places in the island where there's salt uh, water, um, uh, heavy winds and absolutely bad sunlight coming in, we were able to nurture more than 2000 plants for over 15 days. Uh, in a massive structure and the uh, message we wanted to send was if we can do it here why can't you do it in your own home garden and we are getting massive applause and um, appreciation for this right and this is all uh, not just this a lot more that led us to basically being the market leader now where am i going with this right so uh, when i was at junilever uh, it was very uh, nice because you had a product that was tangible. You want to do something, you can do exciting consumer promotions. You can do um, so many visibility um, uh, 
things that can kind of really wow you. And if you want uh, to gain in terms of market share, you can really play with your media plan or, you know, you can do so many innovations because it was an organically in-demand product where people were looking for it when they went to the shop. But if you look at life insurance in Sri Lanka, what you see on the screen is what you get, right? It's a very much a catch me if you can game where people really have to be convinced. Uh, research shows that it is only when you um, have a kid or if a loved one that is very close to you dies that you would consider life insurance. So um, for that, uh, uh, for a, especially a marketing uh, team, uh, we really had to at first really understand what our role was and that was not to sell life insurance through our communications you see people are not looking for life insurance organically that means if you um, really go about talking about product it's just going to go over their heads so we needed to keep them on their toes we needed them to remember us in a positive manner and that is why we always keep on continuously engaging with them Right. So in this catch me if you can game where life insurance marketing, life insurance business is extremely tough, even under normal circumstances, in a really bad year with extreme duress, uh, life insurance, health insurance, unfortunately, are some of the first things to get cut from your monthly bill or monthly repertoire because it's not considered essential, right? But despite this, we were able to have a cracker year. And I have been asked to tell you how we did it or basically my take on it. So I'm when I when when Dr. Rohanta spoke to me about this, I wanted to Google, I want to look at different types of you know um, uh, HBR uh, articles and things like that. But I thought no. Uh, let me think back. I spoke to my team and we really kind of put down a few points that we had on our heart can say that we did. So it's nothing, uh, it's nothing uh, big. It's just very basic. Uh, hand on our heart. This is what we did. I think you will find that they are extremely um, basic. But uh, I find when times are tough, it's to stick to your basics. That's the hardest, that's the toughest, right? So first and foremost, um, when, when challenged, when there's extreme stress out there, the first thing we all believe is that you need to take a step back, take a step back, breathe, calm yourself, and actually take an assessment of the situation. Because if you panic, then your heart takes over, not your brain, right? And then you start spiraling down and you let your stress wag you, you know, like the tail wagging the dog, right? So what's most important at first and in a difficult year, in a difficult time, be it professionally or personally, breathe. Take a moment to assess the situation and calm yourself, right? Then visualize the end. What do you want the end to be? What is the ultimate result? And mind you, don't dream halfway. Dream big. Dream, go for the biggest result that you can think of and, and visualize it. Think about it. Okay, so that's where you want to go. If that's where you, you want to go right now, irrespective of whatever circumstances, what should I do? What do I do as an entity? Um, what do I do as an individual in my professional life, personal life? Because you need to stay healthy. You need to stay, um, you need to basically be by your family in order to do what it's right, what, it, what it's required for your company as well, right? So first and foremost, be it an MBA assessment or a presentation that you have to deliver in a hurry, first step in anything is, is to breathe, stay calm, and most importantly, visualize the end and plan it backwards this is the first step and this i really stand by my team always makes fun of me saying you know take a step back take a step back because i always say that right then this is where i work a lot because i tend to be a very emotionally led person right i, I always say i'm anchored to my heart but i have found through the very limited experience that i have that 
there are instances where you need to let logic drive you where you cannot be emotional in terms of the decisions that you make right especially when it comes to financial aspects of things negotiations um being realistic about your plans you need to keep your heart away and basically stick to your logic but when it comes to your people your family uh, aspirations dreams of your own as well as your teams you need to let your heart take leadership because it is first and foremost the people that are close to you be it in your team be it in your family are going to help you drive towards your dreams so in a situation when you are challenged breathe first and then ask yourself is it my mind or my heart or my brain that should be taking this decision and consciously consciously always take a step back and think am i thinking from my heart am i thinking from my brain because if you catch yourself being emotional when you have shouldn't be or being too rational being too logical when you shouldn't be then you need to go back start over and approach the problem from the beginning right this is something i practice because i really find it difficult to keep the emotions aside when i do this but i i i'm lucky to have wonderful teammates who are very good at doing that so i also depend on those even those who are junior to me and senior to me who are parallel to me who can show me how that emotional aspect can be kept aside or how that emotional aspect that i am so good at can be used better to deal with the problem i have right now then something that a lot of sri lankans are very guilty of doing is that they always think extremely positive they think anything is possible they think that okay it's okay it's going to work out that is that is undue courage you cannot be driven by large proportions of courage and large proportions of optimism also during crisis but you can't also be um tied down by so much caution because during times like this you need to take calculated risks so again this is why it's very important that as a team you approach these challenges be it emotions versus logic courage versus caution you need to as as a team assess how much what is the kind of risk that we should be taking what are the risk mitigations that i should be building in and have i looked at plan a b c or do i have the time to look at plan a b c i need to do it this now i need to be brave so like you know between being careful and being brave you need to strike a balance and that is where as a team your team dynamics will really come into play this is very important because you can really burn yourself by being too careful or by being too bold right then i think this is something that we really don't do correctly we are agile for different reasons we are very agile to follow up on gossip we are very agile to find out unwanted things but we are not really agile in taking the correct actions that are required from us to manage a situation i always tell my team warm up in the morning when you come just like you know don't approach the day in a lazy lethargic just like a mood where we have given up everything warm up your brain look at happy things like you know uh, do your to do list and just warm up so that you're ready to embrace whatever challenge that comes your way think about it as if you're mentally always jogging you don't have to be mentally jogging always but during crisis it's imperative that you are able to flex as much and whenever you are needed to flex right this um i mean i can't stress this important enough uh, in terms of this point agility right kind of agility be it to check up on your teammates be it to make sure the customer journey is uh, right be it to ensure that whatever uh, bad experiences that your customers have had 
are they being you know uh, dealt with properly are, can we convert them into uh, people who endorse our brands uh, even though they've had a bad experience so can we give different kinds of solutions can we give different uh, types of um, campaigns to drive these things or as a team um, in terms of the management are all the um, heads of departments are all the employees saying the same thing believe in the same vision driving the same thing this is agility and this is an everyday thing and during crisis, I, I always think every day you reset to be agile. And tomorrow, if you had yesterday, if you had a failure, today it doesn't matter. You reset and you stay agile, right? Then um, I believe this with a lot of uh, ardor because um, I believe a lot of leaders clam up during crisis. You need to be very transparent. You need to tell your team exactly what's going on exactly what what the best case scenario is what the worst case scenario is and and you need to make sure everybody's aligned to what the repercussions could be but the tonality needs to be inspirational because as a leader if you've fallen um you need to fall maybe with your family maybe with somebody who's able to kind of build you up and then come to your team with your game face on with all the motivation you can muster to tell them what is required to inspire them this is not kind of spinning lies and giving them a, 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 a flowery picture that is not what i mean this is like like i said it's extremely important to be transparent but also show them what they can do be it self growth be it you know um, uh, figuring out something um, that that is really complex so that they can use that for their future right whatever it is that you think might motivate them you need to use that in order to keep that conversation going as a leader because if your team is demotivated you're most likely not <laughs> likely to get anything done and most importantly do not let crisis change you. Um, we have seen people who really lose their cool, who yell at people, who cry, um, who really sever the relationships that we have inter in, in, uh, internally in terms of their organizations as well as in their personal lives because of the stress that they're going through. We need to be able to compartmentalize, deal with it in a, in a healthy way. It can be doing exercise, it can be doing something aesthetic, uh, taking a trip, whatever it is, you need to do this so that you don't change yourself for the worse. If you're changing for the better, that's completely fine. But don't do anything that is so out of character or don't make crisis make you do something that is so out of character because it's not worth it. Because crisis is long, very short term. But your career, your life, it's very long term and at the end of the day you shouldn't look back and think about something that you've gone through which has really done wonders for you in your career but think about it with regret because you have really upset certain people several so, so many relationships and if you're ashamed of the way that you behaved at that time it's not going to be worth it it's not just what you did it's how you did as well so all of this being be it being calm, being agile, managing your emotions versus logic, your, you know, um, managing how much uh, bold you will be versus how cautious you will be, uh, being you, all of this uh, drills down to a daily dose of focus that you will bring in. It's, it is very tiring to keep this up on a daily basis, but you need to breathe, take a step back, focus, and repeat so um, one last thing that I find helps me do that is I've only um, put my team who I value who um, who has made me who I am uh, who I'm eternally thankful for uh, these guys I ensure that we have lunch together I ensure however small uh, what we have achieved we celebrate. It doesn't have to be a big celebration, even if it's just to go to a Vadek Ade and have something, it's completely fine. But this, if you are able to celebrate each and every small win, you will find that this everyday journey of focus, reset, 
is possible because you are not just getting to a destination even though you visualize your end and you do it every day you are not just going through the actions you are enjoying every day you are enjoying you know um toppling mountains and really uh, going through your challenges because let's face it it's every day is one day that we get to live and it's not going to come back so it's very important that we enjoy what we do so this is how we did what we did uh, i hope i i hope i did justice thank you very much um, uh, kavi it really fantastic uh, enjoyed actually every bit of it um can we go to dual screen please uh, ruth Yes, Dr. Han. Um, so, uh, Kavi, there is whole sets of questions coming in. Uh, let me take uh, one by one. Let me just go there. Yeah, here you go. So, uh, the first question they're asking you is... Um, very interesting he's asking uh, what made you study chemistry at university uh, it, it was there any logic to uh, your selection of chemistry uh yeah so i was a bio student i was very good in chemistry uh, it was a no brainer to kind of go forward so um, i mean much to the angst of my mother who wanted me to be a doctor i chose chemistry over medicine because i love um i love how uh, it details you know who we are it gives a very rational um explanation to what is going on in the world um unfortunately <laughs> um like i said i take very emotional decisions when the uh, when the war ended uh, it was uh, the year before i graduated from uni i had a, a scholarship to one of the best uh, universities in the world for nanochemistry but i thought it prudent to stay back because a lot of people were going out of sri lanka and i thought no the 30 year war has ended and i should stay back so uh, <laughs> this is why i say i'm like you know always grounded to my heart so um, i did chemistry but i did not follow through in terms of the phd i stayed back and joined in living instead <laughs> dr yon mute i <laughs> very interesting um 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 sahani is asking you she's an mba student huh, on uh, second year she said then why did you join brands what was the logic of joining brands because chemistry is more to do with um uh, i would say more right brain driven and and you are now moving into the left brain so what what is the logic she is asking uh um, so there was no logic really a uh, more chance so i joined unilever as a management trainee and as you know they have the whole uh, roster where you are kind of sent around the company and as a part of my roster i landed in marketing and i was lucky enough to be able to do a whole launch for vaseline we uh, during my 3 months stint and uh, Uh, they didn't want me to go and i didn't want to leave because i found that uh, i enjoyed uh, because um, you know actually you leave doctor you know better than me uh, it's not just the creative aspect of your brain that's used you are essentially a business leader as a brand manager and you need to be able to drive a business forward both creatively as well as logically and for me i i loved that uh, challenge so i never looked back <laughs> from marketing after that so i mean now you have i mean moved from it's very interesting from chemistry to brands uh handling vaseline and then of course astra margarine uh one of the iconic brands of sri lanka and now of course you have taken over life insurance um and this whole area so uh, i mean is there anybody who 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 believe in you you know whom you believe in that you believe that you should do all these kinds of funny things 
uh, I know the person who didn't believe in my decisions was my mother. She was always fretting, thinking, you know, I would, uh, I would, uh, I'm always kind of giving up on the things that I have worked so hard for. But um, no, so I've had, I was very lucky to have uh, some very good uh, leaders who were able to groom me from the very beginning, especially at Unilever. And um, they were able to show me uh, just not just the business aspect of things, but also um, they were able to groom me as a leader. So I wasn't afraid to take on things that I didn't know. When the uh, invitation came uh, for Sophrogic Life, uh, you know, life insurance is dominated by males. And uh, I, even now, I'm mostly uh, the only female in a boardroom uh, most of the time. So... Uh, but I was lucky to have leaders who kind of edged me forward and uh, friends also who constantly kind of keep on uh, making me believe that I can do it. So um, I'm, I'm not going to name names, but they know who they are. Uh, I am very lucky to have been groomed the right way, to be loved and motivated the right way in both my professional and personal circles to do what I do. So... Kavi, you know that things are a little bit tough right now. We just got to know from Canter that almost 1.1 million households have moved out of full cream milk powder. Uh, you know that, I mean, I mean, working at Lever, you tend to use Canter data to be like your guiding light as to how you take decisions. So uh, it also tells you like that ABSCC group who normally buys about 48 categories when they go to a supermarket has now dropped down to 35, 36 uh, because the cost of, uh, you know, grocery items are really, you know, yeah. and uh, you'd be also surprised for a fantastic, uh, 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 <laughs> I wouldn't say you'd be amazed, but uh, this time when you get your salary slip, when you realize 36% of your salary is going to be taxed, what is your advice to a youngster? Um, so I think um, how I would look at it is there's never going to be a day in our life, uh, be it financial crisis, tsunami, war, or even if we go abroad, um, racism to, you know, so much discrimination that happens in this world. There's not going to be a day in our lives where we are going to be absolutely happy with the external conditions that drive our life. I think the choice to be happy, to be motivated lies with us. I, I sincerely believe that happiness is a choice. And um, while it's going to be extra hard this year, um, you know, Sri Lanka is a lovely land of opportunity. And for those who are not lazy, for those who look for opportunity, there's abundant opportunity. Uh, whilst in the short term, it's going to be extremely tough. And there's no words about it i feel if we look for opportunity opportunity is always there but you need to be you need to be you know determined to make it you need to be you know every day is gonna be grit that you drive so i think for a youngster who's not tired of life who's looking to live an amazing life you need to understand that it's never gonna be rosy but if you strive for it it's there you just have to make it. Um, Hansani from, um, uh, she works for IT company. She heads the IT company, studying uh, the master's at Staffordshire University. She's saying, uh, you're pretty, you're intelligent, and you're successful. And who has inspired you in life? My mom. <laughs> My mom. So, um, uh, like I said, life is never rosy. Um, I was a youngster uh, who was doing really well when my uh, father was alive. Uh, we were, my, me and my sister are just four years apart. I was seven years. My sister was three years. My, my mom was just 32 years when my father suddenly passed away. He was very young. And our lifestyle completely changed. Um, from, a, uh, from a museite who had a driver and a car to ride, drive around, I was forced to give up my beloved school, join a government school, and then carry forward my education. But I saw my mom, who went through absolutely an amazing, challenging time in her life, 
keep her head high still dress extremely well dress meticulously you know keep us in order uh, go through life in an absolutely classy manner uh, so did her mother my grandmother so i've been like i said i've been extremely lucky to have had great people who showed me the way so uh, when i am extra stressed i spend more time <laughs> dressing well so that you know um, part of that is gone by the time you come to office you feel good about yourself and then you can just embrace whatever challenges the day brings so my mom my grandma and my sister they um, have girl power all the way <laughs> so so if you are given another choice in life what what would you be i would continue with nanochemistry be one of the best nanochemists the world ever had and drive the world towards sustainability that's um, no brainer um there's a nice question coming she's saying how do you balance family and work and life she works for uh, ms and uh, dilani and she wants to know uh, how do you balance um so for me i my team would laugh if i if they hear this if i tell them i'm leaving office at 3:30 to go for xyz thing or if i'm taking leave on 11th or 13th don't disturb me that means there's no way that i will change that plan and that is kept for my family and nobody will doubt that i will not be reasonable this is including my bosses because i really work hard i i come early i leave late and i will give it all but when i take off for my family it's a strict boundary i do not compromise unless the world has come to an end like when the astro factory word burned down where i absolutely had to report i keep that boundary i i i don't know how but i i believe in switching off when you need to you need to switch off because um, if if your family is not given that amount of time um, if you regret one day like i said it's not just the what you did it's the how you did if i regret the fact that i haven't spent enough time with my mother or with my family or having enough fun with my team as well as working i don't think it's worth it so this is something i absolutely stand by and <laughs> my team will tell you that this is true if i say i'm going on leave you better plan ahead i am not going to be reachable <laughs> so so does it has it ever crossed your mind that since you're so family oriented that you should uh... think of going overseas um it has i won't say no i mean i think everybody is struggling with certain you know things like you know 8 10 hour long power cuts and all that it does but still i stand by what i said uh i don't think the amount of opportunity we will find outside is going to be as great as the opportunity we will find here and i don't think um the amount of gratification the amount of satisfaction we will have in living our life will be as great as uh, what we will do and what we will achieve in sri lanka because you will have your loved ones you will be a first citizen in your country and for me even if i go out for a stint i would yearn to come back it will be a stint and not a migration that's what right now i believe so kavi i mean you won all the awards that you can win last year you know i mean uh, i was in the judging panel and i saw you getting the uh, world bank ifc award also uh, for being outstanding marketing professional and then you won all the awards of slim be the marketing excellence to dgs and stuff so so what next that my 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 single most wish is to put sri lanka on the map for marketing uh, there are uh, many countries who do great work but i believe uh, the sri lankan potential to be creative is absolutely amazing but for some reason our marketing capabilities are not being spoken of in the same way that you know global things are being spoken of so i think um, a lot of us have to be inspiring ourselves and the younger generations who are coming to really up our game 
or to really start talking about what we do in a larger, bigger, um, larger than life kind of way that so that other countries will also start taking notice of it. Why I say this is um, when it comes to a lot of resources, yes, we are small as a country, but when it comes to creativity, the bigness of ideas, there's no limitation. It's not going to take any money, right? So um, that has been my purpose and that, bit, that is what I will continue to do. So tomorrow morning, 8.30, you are meeting the president of Sri Lanka. Okay. What, would, what would you, what advice would you tell him uh, if he says, okay, Kavi, uh, I know you won all the awards in the world last year, right? But Sri Lanka continues to be bankrupt. So <laughs> what advice would you give him? Uh, whoever it is, it, I mean, the president will bear no name. I will simply ask any politicians who's out there, please walk the talk at least for eight hours a day. I mean, it doesn't have to be 24-7. You can do what you want in the rest of the two-thirds of the day. But uh, we need to start giving back to this beautiful country. Otherwise, there's not going to be a country left. Walk the talk, do what's right for at least one-third of the day so that we can take this country to... Like, you know, what it should be. So, just that. Very interesting question coming. Huh? He's uh, working at Brandix. He heads marketing. He says, what makes you continue to work in Sri Lanka? Because I have hope. Um, I believe that um, some of us, if we get together, even though uh, those the people who should be doing it is not doing it right now. Uh, like Dr. Rohanta, I, I, I see a post from you every day inspiring people about Sri Lanka. I think all of us have a role to play, uh, especially those of us uh, who are in influential positions. We need to do our bit. And I'm hopeful that Sri Lanka will survive because Sri Lanka has always survived. And uh, once we survive, we can work towards thriving. So I have hope that we can turn this around, but all of us have to do our part. So, I mean, you, you are not a, just a marketing person, but you come from a chemistry background, you know, so, and, and from one of the finest universities in, in, in Sri Lanka. Um, what do you think? Should it be brand Ceylon or should it continue as Sri Lanka? Uh, I wish I could ask that question. <laughs> Doctor, as you know, I'm uh, sharing the nation branding, um, uh, project. Before I started off the project, I thought branding a country is very uh, similar to branding a product or a service, but I'm learning now that it's a very different game. And um, I think we need the support of research and a very good benchmarked kind of blueprint to really derive a reply for that answer, uh, that question. I don't know. Uh, my gut used to say yes. But right now, because I'm learning a nation branding and going through the process, I'm going to wait and see what the research tells me. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Kavi, for making time. I know you're really busy and uh, we have just started the year. But uh, before I uh, invite Ruth to say a few words, uh, what's your last final words for Sri Lanka? Stay positive do what you have to do. Because if we don't become the change we want to see in the world, it's just gonna like, you know, continue this way. Just do what is required from all of our end and, you know, small actions. I mean, I know that it's very cliche, but small steps, small actions make big changes. So all of us have to do our bit. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief Marketing Officer of SoftLogic Life Insurance PLC. Um, Kavi Rajapaksa. Ruth, over to you. Thank you so much for joining in with us. What you have shared today, uh, it goes beyond textbooks. No question about it. Your positive mindset, the, your approach to life, your approach to how you work, I think will immensely help um, all our audience in terms of understanding what they must do or at least start thinking in this very unprecedented times. So with this said, um, I'd also like to thank our IT team for the technical support.
um, all the members uh, in the audience who have joined in. This is uh, our students, our alumni, our corporates. Uh, and before we end, I what I would like to say is that at APIT, we, we have a good um, internship structure. And if your company has any vacancies or opportunities on offer, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us and help us uh, do good. So with this said, I'd like to thank uh, Kavi once again. You are just amazing. And thank you for sharing some time from your busy schedule to join in. So I'd like to thank everybody and wish all a good day, a good evening, and a good night from wherever you're joining us from. Take care till we meet next time. Thank you.